live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here are your hosts. John Furrier. Welcome back everyone, we are here live in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services reInvent 2016. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman at Silicon Angles, theCUBE. We're out here getting all the action for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is our team, Nagib, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Security Business at Barracuda Networks. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE, great you. to see you. Former VMware, yep. now change the jerseys. <laughs> Put a new shirt on. Exactly. What's your number? <laughs> number 1,500 employee? <laughs> exactly. So Barracuda's a really successful company, but yes. we were just talking before we came on camera about only 1,500 employees. Yeah. And they're doing so well. A lot of leverage in their business model. But they're doing very well. Not as big also as VMware. Also going through a transformation. I think one of the things that I was very excited about is that they were really embracing public cloud, re-engineering the products to be kind of cloud first moving off the old appliance model and kind of really driving uh, to a lot of customers, ease of use and adoption yeah. in the AWS and Azure. You know, I got to gotta give Barracuda uh, Network some props. Mike Peroni and the founders there built that up from scratch. Yep. Very successful. Then they took venture funding when they kind of didn't need it, which is the best time to take it. And then they just, the rest is history. BJ's there, great team, yeah. really expanded, very success story, entrepreneurial success story, but well positioned. What enticed you to go to Barracuda? I mean, you've been in the industry, looking at your background. You know this business, you worked at some of the big, biggest companies. What lured you over to Barracuda? I think there were two things that I, I was very intrigued by. I, I loved the transformation story. I mean, having been on the other side of this and watching how VMware had kind of changed the world in terms of adding virtualization technology and now seeing public cloud and companies like AWS just dominate the conversation and the transition that was happening. I wanted to be part of a company that was moving towards that and driving it. And number two was really the security story. Security has really been a key aspect of what I was doing at VMware before we joined uh, Barracuda and just watching that kind of expand and explode as an ecosystem of capabilities, it's top of mind for a lot of customers. Barracuda was really spearheading a lot of innovation, specifically within our application and network security, but also with you know, the SaaS models that we have and how we kind of drive kind of as a service type of security for our customers. Both of those are very compelling. Yeah, absolutely. At your last job at VMware, you were right at the intersection of networking and security, of course, with the NICERA acquisition, and NSX, which is doing well. We saw Pat Gelsinger on talking about how that fits into the hall of VMware and AWS. Um, Amazon themselves doing even more with networking. James Hamilton talking last night. I mean, they're getting their own custom silicon, they're, pu they're pushing forward, and security fits in, but it's a big part of the ecosystem. Can, maybe can, can you give, give our audience some pieces, you know, the Amazon services out there, where your stuff fits, you know? Absolutely. Swim lanes or, you so know. So we're definitely seeing, you know, all of our customers talk about AWS and talk about the interest in having really deploy all the use cases that are necessary from dev test to DR. Security becomes, the key enabler to drive massive amounts of adoption and consumption for customers. A lot of times it starts off where they'll just use very basic types of security, but as these things become more production ready, more available for outside consumption from, for customers, security is the number one aspect that they need to do to drive. And they look to ease of use and ease of adoption as the key factors, and which products are better integrated into the fabric. This is where Bar Barracuda just shines in terms of our abilities with our WAF and NG products. And one of the announcements that we made this week is even deeper integration as the first vendor that now does metered level billing for our web application firewall, kind of following along the path of the better consumption models that customers are looking for with the ease of use. Let's talk about the firewall thing for a minute uh, because sure. some, some will say they hear the word firewall, sounds like old hat. Yeah. But last night, Hamilton brought it up on his, during his keynote. And I kind of was intrigued by that. What, what, where does the new firewall look like these days? You mentioned that, you mentioned the billing. It's more complicated now, but what's, what's the new version of the firewall and why is it so relevant now? Well, I think there's two aspects that you have to think about from a firewalling perspective. I think our old model is the big box that sits in the middle of the data center that all traffic kind of pumps through and we check. That's all blown away now. Every customer now has distributed enterprise, branch to cloud, mobile users, the firewall has to be everywhere. And so you've got to think about every IOT device down to every server, how is it protected and how is it managed? That's the first thing. I think the second aspect to it is more and more customers move applications to public cloud, and AWS is a great example. You need purpose-built 
products like a WAF to be able to manage all of the high levels of vulnerability that can come through when you implement your type of uh, application out there. We were just doing actually a, a session. Uh, Amazon had sponsored a No More Ransom program and they actually used the Barracuda WAF as part of that, augmenting their WAF as well to really show how the two together provide the best web levels is of security. A web application firewall. Correct, really yeah. designed for web applications, so, just so, as opposed to. So I hear you talk about IoT and I have to ask, how yeah. do you help prevent with DDoS attacks? How, sorry, say that DDoS. again? DDoS. DDoS, uh, yes. protect from that. Well, I mean, we have protection already into the product that we, we deliver, um, on both the NG firewall and on, on the WAF. Um, many of our customers look to us to be able to manage specifically the layer three, seven type of capabilities that can come from that. You can't have a product out there today that doesn't have some level of DDoS protection. I think that now as a lot more companies put public cloud capabilities and you saw Amazon this week talking about Blackwatch and the work that they're doing to actually protect their services for their customers. Without question, DDoS is becoming kind of a critical checkbox that everybody needs to have to protect themselves. What's the next, next um, way for Barrick? You mentioned the transformation story. Take a minute to describe what is that story? Um, what's that next wave that you guys are on? And obviously security is obvious, but what, what else is out there? What's the 20 mile stair for Barracuda look like? There's a lot of different aspects to, to what we're driving. I think we're seeing with our customers deep interest in hybrid, and how do we integrate our capabilities that is traditionally we're sitting on appliances to make sure that they're mapped more effectively down to what occurs both on-prem and in public cloud. That's a key differentiator for us. Number two is we have a lot more of our services being delivered as a service. So when you look at the capabilities that you have, historically you may have bought a firewall or a WAF as an appliance or a load balancer as an appliance, now you're getting it delivered as a service integrated into the fabric of public cloud. How do you dive deeper and deeper into public cloud capabilities? And then the third aspect, which is kicked off before I joined, but I'm actually accelerating a lot of that, is now for a lot of customers, security is a lot of data coming in, what do I do, how do I react, how do I put machine learning and art you know, the AI level capabilities into that data so that when we see problems occurring, the WAF can automatically respond and notify the NG firewall, here's a new policy you need because I just saw a vulnerability here. Removing customers from half the day-to-day -day manage, but much better orchestration in their capabilities around security. So I got to ask the question, I had a chance Please. to sit down with Andy Jassy for two hours at his house a couple weeks ago, gave me the deep dive, a lot of exclusive material, but one thing that really shined out of that interaction was, how customer focused they are. Yes. And seeing Gelsinger up on stage and saying, him, yeah, our customers are demanding it, the VMware story, which we don't want to go into. But for you guys, I want to ask a specific question. What are some of the Barracuda AWS conversations that you have with Amazon Web Services team? What are those customer requirements that you guys come together on, specifically, Take us inside the ropes, if you will, of some of those conversations. So I think that I'll give you a couple of, of examples which I think are, are, are highlighting this. So first of all, traditionally Barracuda has been more small to medium business. And a lot of small to medium business is moving their SaaS applications and looking at applications like Office 365 and how do they drive the adoption of that service with the right levels of security. Uh, other customers who are looking at infrastructure of a service, uh, large financial services who are moving large types of web applications out to public cloud, look to the Barracuda solution and ask us about ease of use. Can I get it up and running quickly? Yeah. What's the network topology model? Because a lot of the older models don't fit in the new way that I'm trying to do public cloud. Maybe I've got too much usage of I.O. or I'm not really optimizing the quality of service for branch to cloud versus having to tunnel all the traffic back. So those conversations actually accelerate the adoption and they're very well tuned to where the product portfolio is driving today. We're actually seeing some customers start with Barracuda in the public cloud and say, you know what, this thing's actually pretty cool for on-prem. You know, one of the areas we've been watching is the marketplace. You yeah. guys uh, you offer your product in the marketplace. Yes. Uh, we've seen Amazon uh, just announced that you know, I, I can do my, my SaaS billing all through Amazon and if I want. You know, how important is it for, for Barracuda to be in the marketplace? Absolutely critical. And what, uh, what two have you seen? aspects yeah. that are very important to us. Um, so we love to work very closely with AWS on the marketplace. I think you know, the ease of use and ease of configuration should come naturally with ease of procurement. And ease of procurement is really the design model behind which where AWS Marketplace is really driven by. Uh, our integration with metered billing and our first to market around that really was a marketplace activity that we drove. And then our partnerships that we've got, many of our channel partners and then our newly announced partnership with Second Watch is actually driven through marketplace level interaction where they 
take the technology from marketplace and actually integrate it into the solutions they're delivering to their customers and be able to map that back for joint value. All right, so what's your mandate now that you're new on the job? How long have you been in Barracuda? Six months. Six months, so you're getting your sea legs um, in, in, in the company. Yep. What's, what's the plan? What's your, what's your, uh, what's your mission? What, what are the things you're going to do going forward? So a lot of our focus has been shifting from doing cloud as a option to doing cloud first, which really translates into, so how do we drive our API strategy more effectively and holistically? How do we do and look at resiliency within public cloud? Which types of models are we going to leverage as a service versus maintain on-prem? And so much of the engineering effort and the roadmaps have been how do we evolve those capabilities in a more rigorous and, and, and managed way out to their thing. So that's, that's been one of the key yeah. mandates that we've been driving and accelerating what they were already doing before I joined. You know, I think you made a, the point you just made about the SMB making it easy to use. Oh yeah. Really translates well to the cloud. Oh yeah. Because it's got to, you got to reduce the friction. Yeah, well a lot of people have told me, you know, the SMB user was used, used to be looked at as kind of a secondary user, but frankly, a lot of the enterprise users are now having SMB characteristics. I don't have time to sit there and tweak with each individual firewall or each individual ADC when I need to do something. I need things to actually think for themselves, get them up and running, and I need to step back and kind of define what the architecture and the strategy is, which plays yeah. perfectly the into the model the, that- It's all about simplicity. Reduce the steps Absolutely. it takes to do stuff. I was talking to one customer like, yeah, I use Azure, it's six proxies, reverse proxies to stitch stuff together. It's like, who does that? Yeah. I mean, that's not the model. You no, know, customer after customer talking about AWS and how great it is. It's ease of use, how quickly I can get it up and running, how quickly I can build apps. This is what really drives it. That's him, Senior Vice President Barracuda. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Very appreciate that. Thank insight. you very much. Congratulations on the move from VMware to Barracuda it. Networks. Appreciate the time. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. Stu Miniman back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>